Hey everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday evening's online service. I'm in our student campus auditorium. This is where our students typically meet on Wednesday nights. And what you see behind me is the set from this past Wednesday's youth online service. Very proud of our pastors, our, our youth pastors and children's pastors. I don't know if you've seen the content that's been coming out from our youth pastors and children's pastors on Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal, the ministry that has been taking place, even though we can't gather together. Uh, I'm just so thankful for technology that allows us to do uh, what we've been doing over the past few weeks. This is our ninth Sunday of meeting online only. And I gotta tell you, I've learned some things about myself uh, just through all of this. One is that I learned that I can preach with just myself and an iPhone. It definitely is not my preferred method. I've also learned uh, that I can go more than eight weeks without a haircut. I'm fortunate that I had my haircut just two days before all the shutdown happened. But now I am gotta say that I'm so anxious and excited for my hair appointment that's coming up this Friday if nothing else changes it. And I know we're all in that same boat together. I wanna to give a shout out to my daughter, Brianna, who walked a marathon on Friday. She walked a marathon, 26.2 miles, uh, to raise money for Speed the Light. And uh, she did a phenomenal job. She's definitely sore. She's got a few blisters on her feet, but she's recovering. I just wanna say thanks to those who encouraged her, who reached out to her, who supported her in giving to Speed the Light. So thankful for all of you who are doing uh, your part to go above and beyond to, to support and help our missionaries around the world. I wanna remind you that this weekend, we have drive through prayer again. It's Saturday and Sunday from three to four in our main building. Just encourage you to take time to drive through. Uh, we'll have a short conversation, pray with you. If you have your giving, you can drop that off. But these have been some phenomenal times when we've done this in the past and looking forward to doing drive through prayer coming up again this Saturday and Sunday. I wanna to talk to you this evening about bitterness and forgiveness. Bitterness is a deep harbored hurt that poisons the soul. It eats away at the vitality of our spiritual life like a cancer. Bitterness is the opposite of forgiveness. And I wanna ask a question, and I know this is a rhetorical question, but how many of you have ever been hurt by somebody else? Maybe they said something to you, or maybe they gossiped about you, or maybe something bad happened. Maybe it was a, a business deal that went bad or a teacher or a coach or a boss that did something un, unfortunate uh, that, that, that hurt you in the process. I think it's safe to say that we've all been there. We've all experienced hurt and pain, heartbreak and disappointment. But the question that I wanna ask you tonight is what do you do next? After you've experienced hurt or disappointment, what's the next step? Do you just blow it off, yet harbor resentment and bitterness in your heart? Or do you work through the hurt and move on? I wanna look at a verse of scripture found in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews 12, 14. And it says this, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. The English Standard Version says, strive for peace with everyone. The word strive means to aggressively chase, like a hunter pursuing their catch. There is a sense of urgency about striving, making every effort. So I wanna ask you, are you striving for peace? And if you are striving for peace, to whom are you striving for peace with? This verse tells us to strive for peace with everyone, even those who aren't at the top of your friends list. We all have those people in our lives, people who are kind of hard to live at peace with, yet the Bible tells us make every effort to live at peace with everyone and to be holy. I believe that one of our spiritual enemy's greatest weapons is destroying relationships and poisoning hearts with the hopes that it would make us become bitter people. We know that God wants us to love, 
but our enemy wants to kill love and intimacy in our relationships. God wants us to grow in trust, but our enemy wants to steal trust and leave us bitter. In fact, he will do everything possible to plant a seed in the hearts of people that will grow into a root of bitterness. We need to understand, and I know that you know this, but it's worth saying, you can't control what people do, but you can control how you will respond. You can't control what they think about you. You can't control what they say about you. You can't control what they do to you. But the good news is that with God's help and by his power through his Holy Spirit that is, that is at work and lives in us, you can control how you respond. And how you respond speaks volume of your Christian character. So what's the big deal about bitterness? In Hebrews chapter 12, he goes on to tell us that bitterness has a dangerous root. Verse 15 says, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. It's interesting that the writer chooses the word root to describe bitterness. What do you think of when you think of roots? I think of trees and I think of big, tall trees, oak trees with big, big, wide uh, canopy of leaves and branches. When I think about trees, I, I, I don't see the root system underneath, but I know that they can be huge. I've read that the root system can be four to five times uh, the width of the canopy of the tree. So they're huge. What we can't see that's underneath the surface, underneath the soil, what we can't see underneath the surface of the soul is that bitterness can be growing deeper and wider. So the warning is, see to it, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up in you to cause trouble and corruption. We've all experienced hurt. We've been disappointed. We know what it's like to be let down and lied to. But we often don't realize that those roots are taking hold in our lives. And once those roots start to take hold, and we're in trouble. You ever notice that when you're bitter towards someone, you act differently towards them? It doesn't matter what they did or didn't do. We just simply act differently. Usually we're less nice or we're less helpful or we're less communicative with them. You know, it's all there, but we may not even realize it. First Corinthians 13, Paul writes this. He says that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Notice in verse five, it says love is not irritable and it keeps no record of wrongs. Have you ever noticed that bitterness keeps detailed records of the wrong things that have been committed against us? We remember them, don't we? We hold on to those hurts and we almost take pride in being able to remember the details in exactness. You see, bitterness will keep growing and growing. And the longer you allow bitterness to live, the more you keep those detailed records the deeper it grows and the harder it's going to be to kill. Bitterness is very dangerous. When we allow bitterness to live, it becomes a poison that causes trouble. Like Hebrews 12, 15, this says, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Who gets corrupted? Who gets defiled? It says that many of you, when, when bitterness grows, it spreads. Roots of the tree grow and spread, and so does bitterness. The best modern day example I can give you is our political system. And I, without getting into politics, you can just watch the news. It's obvious that there is hatred and bitterness. The Democrats don't like the Republicans, and likewise, the Republicans don't like the Democrats. That's been going on for years, and it's gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better. One bitter person can divide a family. 
One bitter person in your workplace can make things miserable. And bitterness is one of the hardest sins for us to see when we look in the mirror. It might be hard for us to see because we tend to justify the bitterness that we have in our lives. We get people's sympathy. Look what they did to me. Look how they hurt me. I deserve to be angry. I deserve to be bitter. We may, we may try to mask it and hide it, but the reality is, it's still there. And the one we hide it from is ourselves. 1 John 4, 19 and 20 says that we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. John is saying, if you, if you have truly experienced the love of God, then you can't hate your brother and sister. You see, if we're not careful, some of us will receive the forgiveness of God, but not extend that forgiveness to someone else. And the Bible is very clear that you can't receive forgiveness from God if you're not giving forgiveness to your brothers and sisters. So we need to seek God's grace and ask God to help us. Where, that, where is that root of bitterness in our hearts and in our lives? You know, for you, it may not even be there. And I say, great. But for many of us, it is. We just don't want to admit that it really is there. So how do we kill this root of bitterness? Paul says in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, he says, get rid of all bitterness. That's it. Let it go. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So how much bitterness are we to let go of? How much bitterness are we to get rid of? How much rage and anger and all those other evil things? He says all of it. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Paul, in a, in a quick, simple fashion, gives us the remedy for bitterness. He says, let go of it. Get rid of it. Put all that bad stuff away. Throw it all in the garbage can. And then be kind, tender-hearted, and forgive. We should forgive just as we have been forgiven by God. We need to act in love toward one another, just as God acted in love by sending his son to die for our sins. God has forgiven all of our sin, and we need to extend that same grace to others. In Romans 12, Paul gives a very similar teaching to the church in Rome. Rome. Romans 12 has a lot to say about our personal responsibility as a follower of Jesus, to serve others and truly love uh, by what we do and how we live. Listen to these verses of scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse, starting at verse nine. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Remember what he said to the Ephesians? He said, get rid of all bitterness. Let go of that. 
Instead, be kind and forgive. You see, these are the marks of a healthy church. These are the marks of a healthy follower of Jesus. Jesus addresses this in Luke 6, 27 and 28. He says, but to you who are listening, I say, he's saying, look, if you're listening, pay attention here. This is important. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. I know that this, this might seem tough, but listen, this has the power to heal you and, and possibly help someone to see Jesus in you. You're saying, look, I, I, I don't know how to get, this is what you need. And God can work in you and work through you. Jesus calls you to love your enemies, to do good to those who hate you, to bless those who curse you, to pray for those who mistreat you. You're not praying for something bad to happen to them. You're praying for them to experience the power of Jesus, to pray for their hearts to be softened, to pray that they would experience Christ's love, to pray for their wounds to be healed because they're wounded and acting out of that woundedness and out of that pain. Pastor Weaver always tells us, hurt people hurt people. So listen, we need to pray for those people. So these are opportunities for us to rise up and be the people that God is calling us to be. Use that bitterness and let go of it. Be done with it. Get rid of it and start doing these other things. Praying for someone else may not change them. But when you pray, I guarantee you, it will definitely change you. So let me go back to our original verse and try to wrap this up. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Make every effort, strive to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile or corrupt many. So how did Jesus forgive you? He forgives you unconditionally and completely. When he was on the cross, I believe that he was thinking about us and his desire is for us to be free and forgiven, that we would experience his grace and his mercy, his love and his power so that we can pass it on. See, these are opportunities for us to let God in and change us so that we can let God out and change the world around us for his purpose and for his glory. I wanna to end tonight by sharing this simple illustration of the game of Uno. I know many of you, you probably have all heard the game. You've probably all played the game. But you know that sometimes when you're playing Uno, you can be dealt a hand that has that is stacked and loaded with wild cards or draw fours. And when you get a hand like that, you know you've got a winning hand. But imagine that you're playing that game with that kind of a hand against a child. Do you just mercilessly, mercilessly beat them? I mean, you've got the cards and the card to win it. You can lay it down and you can do a victory dance and rub it in their face, I won! Or maybe you kind of throw the game. You pretend that you don't have the, that color card and you draw about a dozen more cards. See, here's the point. You had the opportunity to win, but you chose not to. And it's the same concept with bitterness and letting go of it. You hold the cards. You hold the card of bitterness, you hold the bitterness card, and you hold the compassion card. The question is, which card are you going to play? You choose to forgive and be a forgiving person. And the way that we should look at it is, I have been forgiven by God, therefore I am compelled to forgive others. It's a choice that I make, or I choose bitterness and harbor resentment and let it cause trouble not only in my life, but defile and corrupt the people that are around me and even beyond. 
See, the greatest gift that you could give yourself or your family or your friends is the gift of forgiveness. It's what Jesus has given to us. Give the gift of forgiveness, the gift of peace, the gift of joy, the gift of hope, the gift of love. What God has given you through Christ, it's meant to be passed on for us to give to other people. And so how do we deal with that root of bitterness and getting that out of there? Man, we need to let go of those things and instead put on the things that Jesus has given to us. Forgiveness, love, being tenderhearted and merciful. I encourage us, I want us as a church and as individuals, in a climate that we're in, in the world that we are today, it seems like it's pitting people against each other. And I say, let's open our hearts wide to let the Holy Spirit and his power be full in us so that it will be full working through us and that we will love people, that we will forgive, that we won't let that root of bitterness take, take any place in our heart or in our life. Let's be a church that loves, that reaches out, that forgives, that gives mercy and grace and loves as Christ has loved us. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. We love you. We miss you. We're so looking forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good evening.